This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Thursday, the 23rd day of August in the year 2018. Here's what we're tracking tonight. President David Granger and the government team met this morning with U.S. congressmen and other U.S. officials who were on a two-day visit to this country. The issues of Ghana's emerging oil and gas sector as well as the border controversy with Venezuela were among the items that were discussed, according to a statement from the Ministry of the Presidency. The U.S. team was made up of congressmen from both the Republican and Democratic sides. When the meeting ended, the president described it as a fact-finding mission. Some congressmen were interested in the possibilities of energy. Um, we explained that we've established our own Department of Energy as a start. We explained that we are choosing, um, we're not wedded to one concept, we're choosing um, some areas may have solar, some areas may have hydro, some areas may have wind, some areas may have natural gas. So we're looking at a mix um, of energy sources and we are confident that we'll bring the, the tariff rate down to below 15 US cents per kilowatt hour and maybe um, we'll keep moving downwards and have, have cheap energy. And this would be important to manufacture. So some of the questions were concerned with um, the possibilities of cheap energy. The president said he also briefed the U.S. officials on Guyana's political and governance systems, as well as the oil and gas sector. I give them the assurance, truthfully, that Guyana is a very stable country, law-abiding country. Um, our National Assembly functions, our judiciary functions independently. and. Um, and also the executive branch. So those three branches are separate and um, the executive does not interfere in the judiciary or the autonomous uh, commissions, like the Elections Commission, the Judicial Service Commission, and so on. So I think from the point of view of governance, um, we were uh, able to explain that Guyana is a, a stable, well-governed state. President Granger said the two sides also discussed areas of cooperation which can be built and enhanced where needed in areas such as security, energy and disaster response and preparedness. And our geographic situation has of course implications for border security because of the territorial claim by uh, the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and uh, also claimed by Suriname. So they were interested in that and I give them the assurance that uh, we are on our way to the peaceful resolution of the territorial con uh, controversy with, um, with Venezuela. Vice President and Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich and Minister of State Joe Harmon were also present during the meeting. The visit by the U.S. congressmen represented the largest team of U.S. congressmen to ever visit Guyana. They arrived in Guyana on Wednesday and had lunch with youth representatives and other civil society members before meeting and being briefed by the U.S. ambassador and then later meeting Guyana's Minister of Natural Resources. More news in a moment. Summer is for selfies with lots of data from GTT. Activate a three-day or more data plan to get up to 35% extra data and the chance to win big. LOL this summer with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Summer is for friends, weekly prizes, and super summer getaways from Caribbean Airlines. So top of $1,000 or more and get 25% bonus credit plus a chance to win big. LOL this summer with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Welcome back. Opposition leader Barra Jack Dio today admitted that he did not receive any request to meet with a team of U.S. congressmen who wrapped up the two-day visit to Guyana today. But he wants to know why there was so much secrecy surrounding the visit and the meetings with the government. At the Thursday afternoon press conference, Mr. Jack Dio said he found it strange that the government was tight-lipped about the meeting. We did not meet with the congressmen. There is no request for a meeting. Um, but what I find odd about the entire visit is not just the secrecy, which is deplorable in itself, but when Harmon spoke of this visit, he said that he and the government had learned of the visit from Mr. Trotman. 
The opposition leader and former president said while he would not want to speculate about the nature of the visit, he believes the government of Guyana should have provided more information on the visit long before the congressman arrived. Now, a visit of this nature I expect would be planned with our embassy in Washington. I do not know whether they were informed. A visit of this nature should be planned with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Don't you find it strange that Minister Trotman was the person who was the interlocutor here and that the government of Guyana learned of this visit from Trotman. Mr. Jack Deere told reporters that his party, the PVP, supports long-term and short-term engagement with the United States of America because the destinies of the U.S. and Guyana are intertwined. He just does not want those meetings and visits to be shrouded in secrecy. In the world of politics, two former chiefs of staff of the Guyana Defense Force will now be sitting on the Central Executive of the People's National Congress Reform. Retired Rear Admiral Gary Best and retired Brigadier Edward Collins have both been elected to the party's Executive Committee. The two are among the new faces on the PNC's highest decision-making organ. Dr. Richard Van Vis Charles, who had left the PNC for the Alliance for Change, is now back with the party founded by his late father-in-law, Forbes Burnham. And he too has found his way under new executive, according to sources familiar with the results of the elections for the executive positions. Junior Minister of Public Health Dr. Karen Cummings has also been elected to serve in the committee. PNC Youth Leader and former Chairman of the People's National Congress Youth Arm Christopher Jones has also been elected to serve on the executive. He secured the highest number of votes. Another longtime party youth activist Tanzai McAllister has also been elected. Other persons elected to the Executive Committee are the party's General Secretary Amna Ali, former General Secretary Aubrey Norton, Region 4 Chairperson Genevieve Allen, former Region 10 Chairman Mortimer Mingo, Government Minister and former Police Commissioner Winston Felix, Clement Corlett, Cheryl Sampson, Jennifer Ferreira, and retired GDF Colonel Larry London. Under the PNC's constitution, the leader of the party is also allowed to add non-elected members to the executive committee. The PNC hosted its elections on Sunday during its biennial congress. The party leader, President David Granger, was unchallenged for that position, along with the treasurer. Public health minister and longtime party member Vonda Lawrence was elected a new chairperson, with Annette Ferguson and Dr. George Norton as the two vice chairpersons. Finally tonight, loud screams of disbelief shattered the Wednesday quiet of Freeman Street, Georgetown when it was discovered that a security guard had stabbed his lover to death. Dead is 24-year-old Shanice Lawrence. She was discovered with a knife stuck in her neck. Her reputed husband, Jermaine Bristol, surrendered to the police at a breakdown station after committing the gruesome act. Family members and neighbors cried out in shock as they tried to come to grips with what had taken place. Some relatives recalled that the two were having problems in their relationship, but they never expected that those problems would have ended in murder. According to family members, the woman only recently moved out of the house and that may have angered a man. Yesterday morning, the couple got into a heated argument and when the argument ended, the woman's lifeless body was discovered. Investigations are ongoing this evening as the police prepares charges. And that's your evening news bulletin for tonight. Gordon Mosley reporting.